if you would want to maybe yeah, start off yeah, from yeah. the beginning if you want to. Yeah, yeah. Okay, guys, I think we're now on. Uh, there was a, a hiccup, with, as Raman said. We have two um, connections, and one of them just failed. Um, would you like me to start at the beginning, or are we okay to carry on? Hello? Yeah, I think it's okay if we start from where we left. You okay, Daniel? Yeah, good. Okay, fine. Well, I'll, I'll carry on from there, yeah. I've moved on from there to email, hasn't I? Yeah. Yeah, email is, as I said, the least formal of the three genres. Um, it's replacing memos because it's, it's advantageous technically. And um, it's always professional and it should be free from errors because you've got a chance to check it before you send. Where have we gone? an example of how not to send an email. Um, this is from a student to his tutor. I was late on one of my critiques by about two days, but I had sent it through so I wouldn't get any more late penalties because the paper you gave me to critique... Oh, sorry, the paper you all gave me to critique didn't have anything on it. Now that it is open again, am I still going to be penalised all seven days for the critique? It's basically all one sentence. <laughs> There's no punctuation in it whatsoever. It's using colloquial language rather than language, and it is unclear as to what he actually wants. So that's an example of what not to send as an email. An email needs to be clear. It needs to have, um, oops. A purpose. Inquiry. It asks for a response. The transmittal method and what you're claiming needs to be clear. Any adjustments that need to be made, you can make afterwards and it will ask for a refusal. In that case, he was asking for an extension because he claimed that the material sent to him hadn't been, well, he couldn't open, but no, uh, would he still get penalised for it? Well, that, was, that would have to be worked out by the person that was receiving it uh, to try and make sense of it. So, yeah, it, whatever you write, in whatever form, it needs to have a, an order in which things are put. So, writing strategies, whatever are those. So, always consider the audience and the purpose. If the email is to an expert, be respectful, friendly, and professional. He was writing to a tutor, so that he should have been respectful, friendly, and professional. If it's a complaint letter, if it's something you want to complain about, be firm, formal, and demanding, but not threatening. Yeah, that's one of the, the 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 issues that rises if you're not happy with something is to make it clear that you're not happy with it, but don't start to threaten people because that will not get you the result you require. So this is the tone of what you say. Um, English can be used in many ways, and the actual tone of what you say can give people the right or the wrong impression. As an example, I will give you an instance that happened quite recently where I inquired for the external quality assurance from one of the, our awarding bodies, I, I asked her merely, could she make, give me a date for soon, soon to come in uh, to, to look at some student work so that we could claim certification. I didn't say I wanted it now. I didn't say I wanted her to come in immediately. And I got a very terse response from her saying, uh, basically that she was very busy. And what she did was at the end said, she used my first name. She, she, used, she said, like, uh, I'm very busy and I can't just give dates like that, Billy. 
in English, that is talking down to me. That is being very um, condescending. I'm old enough to see past that, but most people are very upset if that was said to them. Now, I didn't say anything in my response. I just answered the, the uh, communication uh, and left it at that. About two days later, when she was reading through our emails, she came back to apologize for what she'd said and the way she'd said it. So when you've written something, you have made a mistake and said something that you shouldn't have said, by all means, recontact and apologize. Yeah, it's always worthwhile. Always congratulate and thank with a thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Your company always provides the best service. Don't use you when giving bad or negative information. Your shoddy work produced a bad toaster. My toaster no longer works. That's all you need to have said. Not your shoddy work produced a bad toaster. The toaster was bad, yeah? The person you're speaking to might have nothing to do with the manufacturer of it, yeah? Have either of you got any questions about that or any, any comment you want to make? No. Nope. Sorry? No, not as yet. You're okay with that? Yeah. yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Not good. You must have dropped the engine, the housing is badly cracked. So that's making an accusation and, and it's, it's, a, it's acting in a threatening manner. Yeah. And obviously, Anybody that you threaten will provoke a reaction, and that's not what you want. You want to get the problem solved, not to antagonize or upset the person that you're speaking to, because you'll then not get what you want. Better, the badly cracked housing suggests that your engine must have fallen onto a hard surface from some height. That's explaining what's happened without accusing anybody of actually doing it on purpose or, or even by accident and not reporting it. Brief purposeful introduction. The first line should clarify the topic and purpose. In other words, what it's about and what it's for. It shouldn't be more than four or five lines. Just like when you're doing a PowerPoint presentation like this, putting too much information into the page or onto the, um, the slide is confusing for the person that's reading it. So it's just the same with any other sort of form of, com uh, um, of communication. Yeah, Make it clear, don't put too much into it. And avoid diving into details too early or before the purpose of the communication is actually mentioned so they know actually what you're talking about. Yeah. Review the context. We're forgetful and busy people, all of us, so that your reader may not be familiar with what the situation is. Yeah? <laughs> a little, a little told there. Uh, not now I'm busy. He's actually working on a PlayStation by the look of it. Yeah? But you don't. You think he was really working hard. Follow good news first strategy. If you've got information to give, which is sometimes um, it contains not good news, then you put, follow a good news first strategy. So you issue the good news first, the bad news, and then follow it up by repeating the good news. If you do that, it makes. I mean, it's like it's like when um, when students start to send work in to be assessed. Uh, initially, they may have got it wrong or may not have, have misunderstood what was actually being asked of them. Um, so what I do is say, well, good, you've made a good start. Um, I think we'll do a little bit of work with this. Uh, you need to look this, this and this. 
but God thanks we've made a start and now you can get on, on a bit further. So that way I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, yes, you, God, you've made a start. There are a few things that need to be looked at, but God, we have made a start. You understand? Yes? Yeah. Yeah. Again, it's using a reader-centered strategy. Yeah. In other words, you are thinking about the person that you are sending it to, yeah, rather than yourself. How are they going to receive the news that you are you are sending? How is it going to affect them? What will their response be? How to make that response by the way you send the information, make that response positive. Yeah. By using a reason reader centered strategy organize your paragraphs logically subject and purpose which we've discussed quickly then explain the problem in detail or the issue in detail describe how something inconvenience you or convenience you and state what you would like the reader to do and think the reader for his or her response and then thank them and provide make sure always that you provide other contact information as well as um, the email address or the written address for a letter for instance just now we were disconnected by our fantastic system um, and before it reconnected um, I had to call Ryan to give me a lift because he's the IT expert with us. And what I was just about to do was get your uh, phone details so that I could send you a text to tell you that I was dealing with it and I'd be on again in a minute. But I didn't need to because it, it, uh, it reconnected in time. So keep your paragraphs short. No more information than is actually necessary. A good example of that is that um, I work with employers for quite a long time now on recruitment, where I've observed them when they're um, interviewing and made notes on how they can improve. And one of the things I noticed was that when someone sends a CV in for with with the for, for a job. Many times the employer, if it's a long one, won't read it all. Somebody that provides one with just a couple of pages, the employer will read it all. And that's a good example of what this is saying. Keep your information short and to the point and no more than necessary. Uh, that way you'll get the adequate response. Because 10, 15, 20 lines of an email, um, they'll probably get fed up before they get to the end uh, and won't end up um, giving the right information. I'll give you an example again in Latin. Um, I don't know why, I'm not a Latin scholar, but again, it's announcing something, it puts some detail in, it gives a short list, and then says how that can be actually used. So again, it's in some form of order, yeah? And again, it's not too big. To have an active conclusion, you need to tell your reader what you want and give them your contact information. Is that Good contact information. Not no. really. No, yeah. I, I can hardly read it. It's a signature. Uh, my signature, worse than that, you can't, you can't read my signature at all. So, yeah, give your contact information clearly telephone number, email address, whatever, but make sure you've gone, given them the correct details and up to date details. Yeah. It's really important. Hey, be nice. Emo kit. <laughs> People 
when it's not face-to-face -face communication, people will easily take offence if they think or what appears to be to them uh, an insult or something that, that, that criticises them. So that's why when you're communicating, it's very important to, to make sure you read what you've written first and say, would I like to receive that? Is that something that would annoy me? And if it is, modify it. The good thing about email is that you can change it once you've finished it. You can, you can move things around. You can change the language. You can make it sound nicer or harsher. <clears throat> and the other thing, of course, it's a complete record. We looked at memos and um, we looked at letters before. Um, letters depend on a service to actually deliver that letter to the person you've written to. Now, anything can go wrong with that system. And even though the letter has arrived with the person it should have had, they don't really want to know, they can claim, I've never seen it, I've never had a letter. Um, and the same applies to memos. If you're sending them around inside an office or inside a, um, an establishment, people may miss the memo, may or may not see it. But electronically these days, everybody's connected, certainly in the UK, in the offices, um, and, and that out straight away. And you've got a record that it's been sent. <laughs> Is everybody okay with this up to now? Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. Good. So, we'll look at an overview. Pay attention to tone. A brief introduction telling you what it's for. A quick review of the context. If writing to response to some other communication, repeat the details of the context. In view of your email to me stating that, and then go on to give your answer. So there's no um, misunderstanding between the two. For good news, bad news, and I say good news strategy. Yeah. Always, if you've got good news and bad news to give, give the good first, give the bad, and then repeat the good. I, I, I always add that one in on top of that. It, it's, I find it gets a better response. Use a user-centered strategy. Make sure that you, what you say is clear. It makes sure that you've got your message over. It elicits a response that you want so that both parties feel that they've gained something. Organize your paragraphs logically. Introduction. A narration of what it's about, petition asking for something, and justification of why you've done so. Keep the paragraph short. Fewer than eight lines. Yeah? I think on PowerPoint it says no more than eight lines per page, no more than ten words. So that's giving you uh, some idea of what you should be doing when you're actually writing to someone. Fewer than eight lines and use 11 points, readable font. Yeah. Don't use any strange fonts that are hard to read or have, you know, don't, are not to the point. If it's business, then it needs to be in something aerial. Yeah, because that is very clear and this is the font you can see in front of you now. Yeah. Use headings, lists, and tables where appropriate. Any bulleted lists for key points. Any numbered lists for if it's something that's got to be done in sequence, then it's quite often better to write one rather than just bullet points. Have an active conclusion. Make clear what you expect uh, the person you're communicating with to do. Uh, and avoid endings like hoping to hear from you soon. Say, please respond within a certain time if you need the information quickly. But like I say, 
adding please and thank you or best regards or anything of that nature is always good. In English, it's accepted as the norm and it will get you the, the, the result you need. Now, I've done the PowerPoint. What I'm going to do is go into... I'll put that down. So your piece is going to be about categorizing business communication, evaluate the benefits and limitations of a particular type of communication. Now you can choose whether you can choose letters, you can choose email, or you can choose uh, text messages, or you can, you, can, you can choose a method of communication and then um, make an evaluation of it. What's good, what's bad, what are the limitations, etc. Saying how relationships between people can affect the communication, yeah? And look at the different communication models or explain. So we're looking at um, command verbs here, categorize, make a list of, evaluate, pros and cons, benefits and limitations, explain, straightforward explanation. Again, explain a straightforward, yeah? Produce common types of formal business communication in language and um, types of information business communications, using the language that's appropriate to its purpose. Yeah. Whoops. My own unit, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. unit title, yeah. So what you need to do is a type of, or an example of, um, the communication types, yeah. Produce a formal business communication and an informal communication, yeah, as part of your um, criteria. Have, um, I'll go with Maliha. Have you produced any work yet? Sorry? Have you produced any work yet? No, not yet, because I'm still stuck with the unit number two assignments. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't want to divert my attention from that assignment. I want to finish that assignment first and then started with the unit number three uh, assignment. Yeah, well, quite often it's worthwhile if you've got po probably a couple of learning objectives together. You've not finished the unit yet. By all means, send those two in first to, to let the assessor have a look at them and say, yeah, that's great, or I think you need to look at this or I need to look at that. And that will give you a pointer for the rest of the unit so that you won't have, hopefully, won't have any rework to do when you get to the end of the unit. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Actually, I did not know that I could do it this way. I mean, yeah. I could simply work bit by bit rather than there's, the whole assignment altogether. Yeah. Well, there's a, there's a, um, a new um, system we've just brought in, uh, and it's mm -hmm. called Learner Work at UK Versity. There's an email for it. If you send the um, your work in to that particular email address, it will automatically send it to the correct tutor who will then have a look at it, give you some um, uh, assessment of it. Um, and it's always important um, to send your work in, in as a Word document, yeah? All right. That way, um, on the Word system, there is something called review, and it means your assessor can actually run through what you've written, click and put, a, you'll get a little box at the side with a note to what he wants you to do or things that you need to look at. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. It, it just gives you some, if you keep in contact with your, your tutor, um, who will also be doing the assessment anyway, uh, if you keep in contact with them with fairly regularly, they will um, be able to give you some pointers or if you're stuck with anything or if you're not sure about something, email to that um, um, 
an email address will elicit a response fairly quickly. Uh, I'm not saying I'm going to re reply within the hour, but certainly within the, the, the a day or so, you'll get a response from the assessor or your tutor who will tell you, yeah, yeah, you're, you're right, or no, you need to look at this, or you need to look at that. Yeah. With, yeah, with this program, it's not just uh, you listen to a session and then you're left to get on with it. At any time, because we use a blended uh, learning sequence, it's not just distance learning, um, it, it allows the, the, the student or the learner to, to actually come back to their teacher or assessor and say, I didn't quite get this or I didn't quite get that. Now, as you know, this, this um, session has been recorded. We have a, a learner management system which you can uh, um, access at any time. So if you wanted to listen to part of this communication again, or for the, the other couple of guys that haven't um, been able to make this session, uh, that's available to you on the learner management system, and you can always go back into it and have another listen. Okay. Right. Yep. Yeah. Okay with you, Daniel. Hello, Daniel. I think he's. Uh, that's money, huh, Daniel? He's turned off his mic. He didn't yeah, he's his mic off again. Yeah. He, uh, as long as you can hear me, that's the main thing. <laughs> Have you got any questions for me before we close this afternoon? I'm satisfied. I'm good. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, well, thank you for the session. I'm sorry for the uh, disturbances we've had through the break in transmission, uh, but hopefully that will now be a future reference. And I thank you for attending, and I will speak to you again soon. All right, thank you.